So this week we are in the famed Milk River Valley here in Montana. I've been looking at the Milk River ever since the late 90s, early 2000s when I was really getting into hunting and I've always wanted to come here. So we drove up here on October 31st, Halloween, kind of wanted to get that first week of November and trying to get that pre-rut activity, but we got here and it was very difficult to say. We had some possible access to private areas. We knew of some public places that we could hunt around the Milk River bottom. And literally for the first 48 hours, we did nothing but ride in the truck and put on miles, trying to find deer that were actually inhabiting the areas that we could hunt. With the EHD die off that they had a year or two years ago now, plus the blue tongue from, you know, over the past decade, Mix that in with some harsh winters that they've also had and the deer numbers have just absolutely dwindled. So we've only seen probably 40 deer in everything. We've just been putting miles on the truck, trying to put eyes on some deer, but it's been difficult. So it's the afternoon of November 3rd. You know, we've been driving around again today looking for deer and cannot find hardly any whitetails. So we decided to make a big loop and come down through a big chunk of BLM and state land. So after making this big loop, we looked out on this uh, public land out here and there's this mule deer buck that is rutting a doe really, really hard. He's about a thousand yards away, so we haven't been able to get a really good look at him. But with the die off of the whitetail and everything, and the mule deer moving into their historic habitat, it's like, would we rather shoot kind of a dying breed, if you will, of whitetails versus the mule deer that are really starting to populate this area? So we're going to go look at this buck. I can just see that he looks really framey, but I'm not sure really what he is yet. We're going to start moving and see if we can catch up to him. The buck just stood up. Two hundred seventy yards. Yeah, he's a poor boy. Dude, he's nice. Oh man, well, really close there. Like. Could have probably taken a shot, but I just could not get nice and steady with all this. I mean, you see how tall this sagebrush is. I had my bipod completely extended on top of my pack, and the buck kind of busted. And before we knew it, he was at 500 yards and just couldn't do anything. And we just watched a 150-inch type mule deer, four-point, take off. All right, I guess we're gonna keep covering country. Apparently covering country might actually be the thing to do because we finally ran into a deer that wanted to at least give us an opportunity. North American Whitetail is brought to you by Browning Trail Cameras, by Hunt Monkey Gloves, and by Ram Trucks. kind of off the river bottom a little bit now on more of like these flats and little rolling hills and stuff. And we're seeing, again, a lot of mule deer. We've seen a few whitetails, but not nearly as much as we'd like. We came around this little bend here on the state section of land and there was like five or six mule deer bucks right back here. But as soon as I tried to get eyes on them, they took off and I don't know where they're at now, but it's good to look at deer, you know? So. We'll see if we can find something to, to wrap the tag around. Shortly thereafter, we were going around to a new area and found this nice four point buck that was out in this little small opening, just kind of feeding around all by himself. Looked like a mature deer. 
So I quickly made the decision like, hey, we're gonna try to put a stock on this thing. As I was slipping up into this area, the deer bedded down. All you could see was his antlers above the grasses there and everything. And I ended up slipping in to like 80 yards. I sit down and I'm trying to get this deer to stand. I'm making all the noises that I can. This deer won't stand up. It was really windy at that time frame. I ended up going in even closer and got to within 40 yards of this deer, still bedded. As I started to kind of push in, he finally figures out something's wrong, gets up, makes a few bounds, and I put a shot into him. He started bouncing out this way. He's right here. Oh yeah. Dude, he's better than I thought he was. Look how big his body is. He's an old deer. He's a tank. Look at that. This deer's gonna be 300 plus pounds, every bit of it. I mean, he's got a huge head on him. Like, look how big his head is. He's just a decent little four point, you know? It's crazy that we had such a hard week trying to find whitetails. I mean, just such a difficult week finding whitetails. We were able to just slip right in on him. I mean, we watched this deer bed. I dropped over the edge and I had him at like 75 yards and he was just bedded. The wind was blowing pretty hard and it was kind of a crosswind so he couldn't smell me. I had the sun on my back and I just started making noises trying to get him to stand up and he just wouldn't stand up, wouldn't stand up. So I, you know, with only, I don't know, we got about 30 minutes of daylight left. I was like, I'm just gonna push in on him and just try to get him to stand up. And at that point, I mean, he couldn't have been more than 50 yards. You know, and I had my scope out at six power or something like that. And it's not hard just to put it on him and, and hit it. And I mean, you can see, hit him just right there behind the shoulder. And like I said, he went maybe 30 or 40 yards and fell dead. So still a nice four point, pretty sweet. <laughs>